Hello, my family and my friends. This is Pastor Mel Keys, and I am Joshua Generation. And we are claiming God's promises together right here, right now. And it is always our great joy to be about the business of connecting you with more great people doing extraordinary work in the areas of ministry, entrepreneurship, and leadership as it means to operating in their gift and giving God the glory. Today, we have the sheer pleasure of interviewing with Mr. Chad Shapiro. Growing up in the Midwest, Chad learned the value of hard work and integrity at a very young age. Graduating from a Big Ten University with several business degrees, Chad immediately began to put his talents to work running business. Fine-tuning his expertise in human relations and generating profits, Chad helped to create the fastest growing privately held company in the United States within five short years. Seeing a huge opportunity in technology, he began working with companies to develop successful online home-based business models. Frustrated with an apparent lack of integrity and ethics, he finally decided to develop his own internet company no longer having to worry about someone else letting him or his people down, having complete control resulted in perhaps the most innovative and ambitious internet concept the world has yet seen. As CEO of the internet company, Chad is following in the footsteps of Michael Dell and Bill Gates. Mr. Chad Shapiro has had an unparalleled track record of success for now well over a decade. He's enjoyed the wonderful experience of walking on stage in front of thousands of people to receive the number one producer's award. And he's, of course, been involved with numerous charities and nonprofits all around the globe for over 15 years. This man of God is married to his soulmate, the beautiful Erica, and they have been passionately married together for now over 10 years. They have two beautiful daughters. They reside in San Antonio, Texas. But let me not fail to mention that this man of God, this CEO, is also one of the newest pastors right here in the city of San Antonio, Texas, leading God's people at Bethel International North Central. Strap in. Take notes and get ready to be blessed. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and praise the Lord. This is Pastor Mel Keys of I Am Joshua Generation, and I'm so excited, and you should be too. And the reason is because we have a special guest on the line with us today. You've already heard his incredible bio, but now you're about to get the real deal, Holyfield, because we have on the line, on the camera with us, we're talking about, listen, we got somebody who knows what it means to be in ministry. That's very important. Foundational. You're talking about serving God, serving God's people, has a heart for ministry, and that threefold chord, y'all already know what I'm talking about, the entrepreneurship. That piece of his life is so in place. We're talking about a general in God's army when it comes to entrepreneurship. And then that last chord, that leadership, how he literally leads his company. We're talking about Mr. Chad Shapiro, CEO, pastor, great man of God. Listen, how are you? Oh, man, I'm doing so great. It's such a blessing and an honor to be on here with you. I want to thank God for the opportunity and, and oh. thank you because uh, – you, you, your leadership here in this city means so much to me and so many people that I love and care about throughout. So I, I just thank you for the opportunity to spend some time with you. Man, I, I couldn't go to sleep last night. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> it's exciting, exciting. Yeah, it's one of those things where I feel it's a divine moment, divine connection. Everything is lined yeah. up just right. Uh, there's just so many ways that God sets things up. Sometimes we're ready for them. Sometimes we're... Not ready for them, but we're ready now to make this connection, and we sense that God is doing something great. So, again, I am so, so overjoyed 
to have you with us today on this inspirational interview. It's all about inspiring some other people because there are many people just like us, whether they're in ministry or whether they're in corporate America somewhere doing something big and they have a vision, they want to bring it to fruition and maybe they just don't know how there's some missing pieces, but I know that you got some keys in your life that we want to talk about. Definitely, uh, you know, to God first. I got it. Before we even go too far, I want to say how thankful I am to my wife and all the support she does, and my kids, and and then the people that we have in business that God has surrounded me with, like Miss Lori Rubich, my partner. She is phenomenal. And hope many of you guys will get a chance to learn from her and and uh, all the Marwan Powell, our president. I mean, all these amazing leaders that uh, even give me a chance to to meet somebody like you and and to be able to. Uh, help others it's just it's just such a blessing so, so I'm, wow. I'm, I'm excited I'm excited awesome. awesome and you're and you're naming you're naming some people from all over the world and we're going to get into that in just a moment but brother chat would you do this for us man take us back we, we heard your bio but we really want to hear your story from you we want to hear from you uh, about your growing up years how it is that you have come into this entrepreneurship piece how soon you, you 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 walked into it? What what was it like growing up as as a young man? Well, I was very very fortunate. My father is a neurologist and multiple sclerosis and world renowned um, doctor and uh, phenomenal. My mom is incredibly intelligent, did really really well in school. So um, they kind of were pushing me into all the magnet advanced kind of programs more than I was even ready to go to do them and, uh, and went to college in, in Madison, Wisconsin and was thinking about being a doctor and, and uh, when I started having a hard time even passing Biology 101, I thought maybe that wasn't a good idea because yeah. if I'm struggling yeah. with that class then I don't know and, and so I started, uh, but I love people and, right. I, and I started going into business and thinking about entrepreneurship and wanting to be able to be some in something that could cut checks to people that could allow them to, you know, feed their families and help their kids go to school and all these things in business. So I ended up graduating with three different business degrees and, and uh, coming out into the workforce. At the time in school, I was trying to pay some bills and, and have some money in my pocket. So I was bartending, managing a bar, got to see a small business in action. And I always uh, tell people, I, I really think I probably learned more about business there um, at the bar working with that owner sometimes than I did most of my classes. And mm -hmm. uh, when I graduated from school, I was not excited to put my resume together and get all suited up and go to the uh, to the interviews. I was not excited to have them tell me where I was going to live and what I was going to be doing. And, and uh, sat down with the owner of that bar to uh, think about one day purchasing it from him and starting a restaurant. Uh, in there, and he said, let's do it. And so I was mm -hmm. so excited, so grateful. It was my first small business that I was getting a chance to help lead, and, and then uh, and then I uh, one day got the, my, the rug pulled from underneath. The owner came in and said, we're going to expand the bar restaurant, which I was helping him do that. I was so excited to do that. And mm -hmm. then he said, but I, I don't need to pay that salary anymore because I'm going to be in here every day helping with the expansion. And I went home in tears. Uh, stressed out, frustrated, $18,000 in credit card debt, a year lease, you know, that I was stuck in this kind of small town, and uh, I thought, I never want to have that happen to me ever again. Mm. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, and I, uh, I was really, really sad and scared, and my parents were kind of done with helping me out. They helped me through school. They weren't supposed to keep helping me, and right. uh, luckily for me, um, I got a call from a friend that used to drink at the bar, and, and I used to even know in high school, mm -hmm. and he said, come down and check out this meeting, and uh, it's going to be like a party, and I was, I was like, okay, let's go, and, and, uh, <laughs> and I came, in, came into this thing, was not, was not a party, all these people were dressed up, I was sitting there in my umbro shorts and tank top and hat and just sitting there ready to relax, <laughs> and, uh, and these guys were going through all these water filters and nutrition products and all this other stuff and I uh -huh. didn't know what they were doing. Uh, my first, first, first view of any kind of network marketing in my life, never even heard of it. Wow. And uh, I just didn't ever think, I, I hated sales. I, I think I got fired from a telemarketing job in like one day because uh -huh. I couldn't even keep up with what they were the quotas they had. 
And, right. Uh, so I, I started thinking of, you know, could I build a team? Could I make money from this? And real skeptical, real hesitant, uh, but got started there. And that's kind of what started my walk into it. I don't know if you want me to continue into where yes, I Yes, uh, we want to hear it. Today. Okay, but uh, so so that was uh, for about a month. I was just not sure what they were talking about. I was hesitant. I became even more hesitant and more skeptical because I made a couple of phone calls to some family and friends, and they told me things never work. You're hmm. crazy. Forget about that. And filled my head with all these these doubts. And uh, luckily for me, I was unemployed. Seriously, yes. because if I wasn't unemployed. Um, I probably would have just got to, you know, too busy working my job. I, I really right. thought I was rocking it when I was bar managing for twenty three thousand a year. I mean, you uh -huh. a week before you could have you couldn't have talked to me about it because I thought I was already <laughs> doing it. Uh, and so, yeah, and so uh, so losing my job and then having so much free time. Mm -hmm. This network marketing company was in offices, which kind of fit my paradigm, my concept of working. And, mm -hmm. and they're all dressed up, which, you know, coming out of college. Um, I, I thought all network marketing companies probably did that, but obviously now being in the industry for decades, I realized that most don't. Um, they're working in their full-time, full blast. So I got in there and I started asking questions or a day in, and mm -hmm. it just started to make sense. Every every objection I had, you know, they had an answer for, and, mm -hmm. and I started growing closer, learning more. As I mm -hmm. learned more, I became more confident. The first month, I made no money. It was nobody's fault but mine because I was just sitting there doing nothing, just kind of mm -hmm. asking questions. But the second month, as I went to a lot of these trainings, I mm -hmm. decided to jump in, that this was where I was going to learn how mm -hmm. to become an entrepreneur. I was always a motivated kid um, mm -hmm. that was trying to learn and grow, but mm -hmm. now I had mentors that were in it with me, which I don't know if people know how much of a difference it can make to somebody's life, but when you have... People like my partner, Miss Lori Rubish, who produced millions and millions and millions of dollars in the industry that right. now are part of the same organization that you are, taking you under their wing. Um, right. My professors didn't, didn't do that. My professors made money on my tuition. They right. didn't make money when I graduate. They made money on my on, on paying for the classes. Right. When I buy a book, they make money from selling me the book or the DVD right. or the seminar or whatever it is. Right. This, this industry, people make money on our success, mm -hmm. and I just fell in love with that. The whole mm -hmm. idea of, you know, uh, to hand a person a fish, feed them for a day, teach them how to fish, feed them for life. And these yes. people were, like, in the trenches with me, doing it with me, and my check just, because of my leading by example, and the only part I did good was jumping in, full blast, but they were doing all the help, all the answering questions, all of the stuff while I was busy just kind of networking and putting them to work on, on the phone. And my right. check was, you know, I mean, it, it, we don't really try to make any income claims in our right. business now because it's of not course. to entice people. This is a different business 20-some years ago. But my yeah. first check was about 4000 some dollars back then, which was more money than I ever made in my entire life. And then mm -hmm. it just went higher and higher and higher. Um, mm -hmm. 60 grand the first year, 120 the next year, and again, that is not, you know, uh, expectation of what people can earn. But for me, right. back then, right. that right. was more money than I ever thought. To be a 24-year-old kid with a six-figure income, you know, and I've started spending money like crazy, all the stuff, and, and it just was a blessing. Um, wow. I just fell in love with the vision, and unfortunately, um, as many times in this industry, people, um, you know, things happen at the top, which, you know, maybe disrupt the, the businesses, and they're not built for the long haul. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, even though I learned so much in that company and it was life changing, um, it ended up not being uh, uh, keeping going. And I was mm -hmm. trying to find something for years. It won with another company, bring the people over there. And unfortunately, that had a struggle and wasn't mm -hmm. really done well for the long haul. Then another company, and I was just becoming heartbroken because right. the people that were in my team were like my right. family yeah. and my friends. And yeah. how do you go into them and saying, Hey, now we got to go over here. Oh, wow. gosh. And so wow. your opportunity came up 14 some years ago when that business was was transitioning. And they said, well, you're the top leader here. Why don't we help you, you know, instead of just closing it down, why don't we help you be in position to take it from here? And, uh, you know, I, I was not planning to do anything like that. 
Um, mm-hmm. And I it was not on my radar, but I was so right. heartbroken at the time with all these other things. I sat down with a, a receiver from the FTC to ask about the legalities of comp plans and this and that, and had mm-hmm. all the text to be able to do it. And we launched the company back then, and wow. uh, and it just has been a blessing. It was a about a five store uh, affiliate shopping mall type company with only five stores. We added more stores and more stores and more stores where now we have like 1,500 different affiliate agreements around the world. Uh, 1,500. Growth in my life, um, you know, became, was up coming alongside it because a lot of times people like me are too busy trying to pay their bills. Mm-hmm. They might not pick up the word of God and they might right. not spend time with their family because they're stressed right. and they're frustrated. Well, right. when I start having freedom of schedule thanks to this industry and mm-hmm. thanks to the money that is created, I started right. growing in my faith. And guess what God did? It was amazing. Along that way, the church said, you know, how come you are given more money than everybody? You're so young. You don't have a job. You know what's going on? Yeah. And I started showing them the shopping site, and they said, can we use that to fundraise for mission? Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, that's not a bad idea, but, but uh, let's. You know, it's too home businessy at the time. Let right. me work on creating separate websites to cater to the shop and the members only, instead of being pitched on an opportunity. And let me create right. uh, with the text uh, rg.org, which will help to explain to the nonprofits. And I'm telling you, Pastor Mel, when we did that, it took a long time and a lot of money. It probably mm-hmm. took about a year later, mm-hmm. and it just helped our whole business pop because all of a sudden. Now people were looking at network marketing instead of just talking to their cousin uh-huh. about buying something. Now they're thinking about the school. They're thinking about the youth right. group. They're thinking about the church. They're thinking about right. these organizations and earning a referral percentage from the whole thing. So people that was never done network marketing all of a sudden mm-hmm. were pouring into RGB from around the world. And now, uh, obviously, the Internet I mean, that was 14 some years ago. And the right. Internet's only grown and grown and grown. And grown. Tremendous. Um, a lot of our first years was more of even just so excited about that nonprofit piece mm-hmm. that we, we really weren't even promoting the business. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, can reconnecting with Miss Lori Rubidge and her, you know, you know, helping me see how the leaders of our business that were doing it full blast mm-hmm. were having these incredible lifestyles, just like we had had back in the day. But then, right. and the, but they were also helping the most nonprofits. Mm-hmm. And so I had, you know, to really take some shifts a few years ago to be able to put some bonuses for the people that want to go full blast, hardcore, um, in to introduce some promotions like cruises and different things, mm-hmm. you know, to not get away from the nonprofits, but to have the leadership type people that right. want to provide for their family. I could do it by helping thousands of profits around the world, you know, to uh, appeal to them uh, mm-hmm. instead of just a whole bunch of people that we're really trying to make money to just help people. You know, mm-hmm. that's a transition that we've been in, and I'm telling you, that as well um, to, to create a lot of the worldwide blessing uh, we have Man. now, you know, worldwide, which is crazy. To be sitting here yeah. in Texas, yeah. the, you know, like last week there was somebody from Ghana that, you know, was a leader person, put in like, you know, 20 different people within a, an hour. I mean, it's just amazing what's happening. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. So that's where we are. Um, my, my walk with God in the church and to be able to you know spend time with that and to be able to earn the income from a business like like RGB to help people all around the world um, mm-hmm. you know it's just kind of a platform that we have and to work with amazing people um, mm-hmm. like I've mentioned and and all many pastors and many leaders and many uh, doctors and different people from around the world that are looking at network marketing as, as not that crazy little thing, but yeah. more of you know, when the economy dipped, I don't, I'm sure we all remember that people mm-hmm. couldn't rely on that nine to five anymore. Not safe. So the network marketing shot up like in everybody's mind. My right. wife would take our kids to mops, mothers, the preschool yeah. children over yeah. here at CBC and there'd be thousands of moms. They had to tell the ladies to stop recruiting each other because everybody was in yeah. something. Yeah. It's like the whole industry is changing, but yeah. to have what RGB has, um, you know, worldwide reach from the comfort, we, we call it work from anywhere, um, mm-hmm. you know, to have that thing, that ability and to get right. paid on what people do every day um, yes. already has been a major, major blessing. So um, from from just the stores, now we have crowdfunding technology to help nonprofits. Okay. We have agreements with Swagbucks, which means 
uh, download an app. This app is crazy. You can you watch videos, get paid mm -hmm. rewards for watching videos, for searching on the internet, for playing games, um, mm -hmm. you know, for going to local restaurants and just paying mm -hmm. like you normally do. Attract the rewards and get rewards from that. And people are building a, t a distribution network getting paid a cut on helping people do all of these things. RGB mm. Health, I mean, some incredible health products that are life-changing. All right. of these revenues underneath one umbrella as we've added from five agreements to now 1,500 some. I try to relate it to Walmart or grocery store or Amazon, how they don't make toilet paper and yogurt and, and iced tea and right. toothpaste. They bring them in because right. you and I will go fill up our carts and they want to make money. Right, that. and it's a flexible model so that years later, I'm sure the grocery store has different products than they did back then. I mean, right, many of us were around when Walmart didn't have cell phones. That's right. Kind of big, right, right, and, and that's a whole other revenue stream. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. our GB is positioned unlike any network marketing company out there, where mm -hmm. we add stores and agreements on a monthly basis that create more revenue streams for all of us and mm -hmm. we just continue to help less nonprofit organizations customers mm -hmm. and people around the world and, and we sign them up for free so there's no barriers to them coming on board get excited about so I could talk about it forever but I mean that's where we are today and that's kind of how we got here um, and I and I just feel so thankful to God I never would have been able to do all this stuff on my own if it wasn't for him and creating this and my you know just I just try to humbly submit to wherever he's taking us and, and, uh, Man. and how he's taking us on the phone with you. So it's, it's Man, crazy. that's an incredible story. Thank you for the passion that you have for what it is you're doing. And I know you're not just doing it for yourself. You're not a selfish person. person. You're very generous with your time, with your energy, with your resources, and you've literally helped people all over the world. You said a number of things, and I want to go back on some of the things. You mentioned how you had been in multiple opportunities as they presented themselves to you. You took advantage of the opportunity at the time, but it didn't turn out the way that you anticipated. Maybe with your first one, you thought that was it. You would do that for the rest of your life. Maybe the second one, you thought the same. The third one, you, and you know, there are a lot of people outside of the industry of direct sales, outside of the, the industry of working from home. They'll look at someone like yourself, myself, and countless others, and they say, man, you've done four things, five things, or, 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 or more, and they look at those things as failures. But you brought up about the, the heart you had for your family, and, 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 and I'm talking about your business partners, and keeping them in connection with you so that they can get the success that you had first revealed to them. So talk to us about whether or not those changes that you had to make to where you are today. Do you perceive them as failures? And talk to us about how it is that you have the mindset to bring out success in other people and how that makes you more successful. Well, thank you for that. What a great question. Absolutely awesome. I, I think the reality is people see the struggles in business because we're putting our dreams and visions maybe out there more. But mm -hmm. we could go back to every person who's had a job and maybe see that, you know, I used to bag groceries, I used to be a stockbroker when I was 18 and 19, I'm not doing that anymore, mm -hmm. um, I used to manage that bar, you know, and, and so how many times can we see people switching jobs? Now, they're not out there with their heart selling and, and maybe building, you know, a, a team and so it doesn't mm -hmm. look like uh, as much of a failure type thing as when right. you switch, I, I, research shows people this day and age, switch jobs every 3.5 years. And so, right. I mean, the, the people that are younger are, are realizing that, hey, the entrepreneur that goes out there might be even more secure and more safe and less mm -hmm. of a failure. It doesn't mean they're going to hit a home run every time, but mm -hmm. if it's 3.5 you know, years between jobs and switching careers and graduating mm -hmm. from college and not even working in the same field, which mm -hmm. most of us have seen, not having any money for retirement, um, mm -hmm. the people that do go out there to try – um, to do something. I, I think for me, it was trying to do the best I could to honor, uh, you know, I didn't even know God at the time, so I can't say it was to honor my faith, but to honor no. my team, to do what I thought was right. I tried to do my best, like every entrepreneur probably tries mm. to do, and it didn't work out well all mm. the time. It doesn't mm. work out well all the time in dating. Yes. It doesn't work out well in a lot of things. 
we yeah. can blame the industry or the businesses, but a lot of time, you know what I found, Pastor Mel, is a lot of time there's a lot of growth that has to be done in us. Yeah. You know, they're coming up in networking for every scam that we're worried about and everything. Majority of it, if we're really honest, is, mm -hmm. is that we aren't quite ready yet. Somebody's making right. money there and they're learning how to sell products and services right. and they're doing fine, but maybe we don't do it and we get frustrated by that. Right. And, and it's okay. Being an entrepreneur is not easy. No. And it takes growth. And that's why you yeah. probably hear my heart because I get so excited when yeah. people like you actually help me, train mm -hmm. me. You know, like my partner, Miss Lori Rubidge, was on the stage when I was the young guy with my notepad sitting there paying for trainings over and over and over. She was the lead trainer and they changed my life forever. So right. I would say that, that this industry is absolutely phenomenal. You might mm -hmm. have to, you know, be knocked down a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, to get, getting back up to try right. to find home run. Most entrepreneurs have, right. have to do that, whether they're in network marketing or not, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. keep growing, they keep getting stronger, and they keep getting better every time uh, mm -hmm. to be able to make the, the dreams finally come true. Right. And, uh, and hopefully people respect that and honor that and, and maybe even see that, if they're honest, in their own life, whether they're right. in network marketing or, or business or ministry. Um, you know, it, None of this stuff's easy. No. No, no, that's good. Thank you for sharing that. That brings a lot of clarity. Let me also ask you this. As it relates to the industry as a, as a whole, I mean, there are so many different ways you can go. In. I mean, you mentioned health and wellness, uh, products for uh, the environment, whether it's water, uh, you, you name it. The list goes on and on. You can find a company that markets anything, air, right? Yeah, but one of the things I love about what you've done with our GV, and that stands for Global Vision, we'll bring that in in just a moment, is you've pointed it towards what's already working. You're not changing people's habits. You're, di you're redirecting them to what they've already been doing and allowing them to do two things, if I'm correct. They're saving money on what they're already doing, and they're making money by being a part of the business. Can you talk on that for us? Oh yeah, exactly. When I was marketing different products 20 some years ago before the internet, it was always on my mind how it was hard to get somebody excited about something they'd never heard of or some mm -hmm. new thing or some new name and usually almost even higher price when mm -hmm. what they might be buying at the store. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, I heard of models like Amway that had products that people were already buying. And I thought, that makes sense. You're like, mm -hmm. why can't we do that? You're like, mm -hmm. make money from a, a two liter of Coca-Cola or something, which if somebody already wants, mm -hmm. instead of trying to twist somebody's arm into, you know, this new thing. And so when the internet hit and this concept of affiliate marketing, mm -hmm. which is an internet term that if you haven't heard of it, please go look at it. I'm not talking about affiliates in your team of a network marketing. I'm talking about affiliate marketing. Mm -hmm. Stores have software to bring on affiliates like RGB to carry to get a link to their mm -hmm. website to bring them traffic. They mm -hmm. need different levels, bringing them as many customers as they right. can. If they have Kindles, if they have a Home Depot or whatever it is, it's mm -hmm. a billion dollar industry because they're trying to get the their their name out there. So they're mm -hmm. using these affiliates to bring them traffic. Mm -hmm. and so I, I saw the shopping mall idea fell in love with it because mm -hmm. everyone's already doing this stuff. If they're not online doing this stuff, then they could be your best customer because if right. you bring them in to see it, they, a lot of times we know how much savings, like you mentioned, yes. can be done online. They get used to going through our GV you know, mm -hmm. because you, if they've never done it before, now they're learning from someone like you or I how right. to do it. Right. go to that big way they get you that is comfortable they see all the stores they're right. on it they're saving money and you have a customer for life and guess right. what yes they get cash back they get a portion of our agreement back mm -hmm. to them even for signing up for free and right so then all of these revenue streams underneath one umbrella because if you're a leader type I'm not mm -hmm. talking about customers I'm talking about a leader right. type right the hardest part of this whole networking thing is to build a team is just mm -hmm. not easy. Mm -hmm. People wish it was, you know, mm -hmm. they see somebody tell them, you know, watch a video and they're like, oh yeah, you know, 
I have a thousand people and like if you make ten dollars from each of them then right. you know like and, and it sounds so easy that all of a sudden right. you start trying to take it to people and people are like no thanks no thanks yeah. get that away yeah. from me I don't want to do it and they're right. frustrated I don't want to. and so it's not easy mm -hmm. it's not easy right like, nothing's easy to create massive momentum of, of people that are not just using your products and services but we're talking mm -hmm. about on board mm -hmm. it will get easier at least if the product is not isolating people on its own. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't think about this. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if I'm in Mary Kay, which obviously is a strong company, empowering Very much. women, amazing, Very much. not a whole lot of men right. that would be doing videos right now, right. like we are, right. where somebody's you know, talking about their enthusiasm for their Mary Kay business as a male because right. a lot of the men won't, right. and they might have, you know, Cologne and different, so I don't. I'm right, right. Saying, like, of course, there's not a whole lot of men there. So, right. a lot of our top producers are female. Right. But they have a lot of strong men in their distribution network that helps their family earn income every single week. But if right. they weren't in RGB, right. if they were in something where it was just for that product line more dedicated yes. for yes. females, they would lose all their men. Not as customers. We're talking right. about leaders. Right. to their team. Uh -huh. If I'm in a, a financial product type in, in networking business, right? you have to sometimes have licenses, you have to sometimes have a, 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 you know, a personality type that is, is open and excited about that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a lot of our people that we have are like, woohoo, you know, like, I'm not yeah. ready to study for anything. I just want right. to help people and help nonprofits <laughs> and do all this stuff. You're going to you're going to miss, not even just as a customer, you're going to miss their entire distribution network right. for the rest of your life. Right. Not because of you as a leader, but because of what you might be marketing. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I'm so sold out to the affiliate marketing concept and having all these revenue streams underneath one umbrella is because mm -hmm. it caters to everybody. We have people in their 80s. We have people in their teens. We I have like people it. doesn't matter what color you are, black, white, purple, yes. green, yellow. Doesn't yes. matter your background. If you think the if you even think the internet is kind of growing, yeah, if you're a potential for us. Whether you have a cell phone, you might not have a laptop, you might not have right. a desktop. You're a potential leader for us, which right. is where we help all the nonprofits and all the customers come from. So yes. it just is kind of you know making it possible to not have too many holes in the net or to yeah. miss out because we don't have the right thing to appeal. Right. You know, we, we can appeal to a broad group. So yeah, we appeal have health for all the people that are excited about health, we have some of the best health you could ever imagine. And at mm -hmm. the same time, if health maybe and you know those products are not your thing and mm -hmm. but you're realizing that Walmart and eBay and Amazon and Disney and oh my gosh, right, then yeah. we don't lose you. Yeah. You know, because you, the the person who's excited about the internet might yeah. end up having four hundred customers for the health. Right. So gotcha. That's why gotcha. is really broad. If Walmart didn't, if it, Walmart only had one product or or one product line, they wouldn't have the sales that they do. Of if course. Amazon left themselves with just books. They right. Wouldn't have you know have gigantic revenue streams. Exactly. Categories of categories of categories products exactly. within the category. And and they make money from all of them. Well, that's right. The I love it. I love it. Share another thing with us, and that is this. And again, we're not knocking any other particular company within the industry because every one of them is helping somebody. And I've had this belief a long time. There are leaders and great people in every single company. You know. However. When you look at everything pound for pound and you compare apples to apples, let's just be honest. There are a lot of companies that they say that there are home-based businesses or there are online opportunities, but most of what they have to do isn't at the home. And most of what they do isn't even online. They have to rent a lot of hotel space. They have to go to a whole lot of conferences in other cities and other states. And those are great environments for learning personal development and all that not knocking that I've grown tremendously from that as well but le let me he let us hear from you your perspective Apple to Apple fair comparison how our GV our global vision 
has such a huge advantage for a large amount of people who really want to work online and not have to do all of that, but just focus online. They don't have time. Maybe they're already busy at work, school, ministry, whatever they're doing, and all they have is maybe 10, 15 hours a week to devote online. Talk to us about the advantages. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you for that. We we call it working from anywhere because as long as there's an internet connection, um, they could do amazing things with us wherever they are. They could be on the beach, they could be in the car, they could be wherever. And what it allows people to do and not having to show up in, in in live meetings face to face, it allows the leader type to build the distribution network through the internet using videos, which are a lot. Of, a lot more helpful sometimes when mm -hmm. you can lean on somebody that's an expert in the business to do the communicating for you when you're new. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the video can be seen from people all over the place, so you don't have to be sitting down with them. Like, we're not sitting together right now. We can, right. People can be anywhere in the world. And, right. so, and then when, when we do webinars and video conferences, if the person back in the day, if somebody was excited, they, yeah. you know, they'd be in a city where there may be no office or something and they'd be stuck. We'd be, and so how would we do that? They might have to move. Right. Now, all the meetings that we do are on the internet. So mm -hmm. I could be on vacation, you could be on vacation for mm -hmm. a week, but the people are still tied in to the training and learning and videos and everything and building the business and didn't slow them down a bit. Mm -hmm. You could be so new at this, which everyone has to start off new. Right. And you could be so new, not very you know, skilled yet, but some gets excited about the vision, mm -hmm. and they start to learn from the top leaders in the company, but they're part of your team underneath, and mm -hmm. they're plugging in, and they're building, and that mm -hmm. even though you're new, you get credit right. for referral. And, mm -hmm. and, the, and it is even global. So a lot of our top people are in France, Canada, you know, we're all around the world. Africa. I mean, so many different people that the Internet opens up to, and these mm -hmm. revenue streams that we have are internet based and so they can profit from all over the world and then, and again like you mentioned the part-time person really 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 can watch videos archives on their own schedule they're mm -hmm. not limited to how many coffees they're having with people at the restaurant or at the coffee shop because mm -hmm. they're showing technology they're sharing the vision for wow. people that are learning it on their own speed at their own time and wow. so uh, yeah, it's awesome. People that are, are doctors that are trying to build money for their retirement or to yeah. be, you know, 10 years down the road not be a doctor. Like, yeah. they can do that with something like this. Right. Um, you know, and, and have the freedom and the flexibility uh, because of the way we, we have it all set up. Yeah, great question. Beautiful. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful. Just a few others before we get into some other areas here, and I don't want to hold you too long because I appreciate your time, but let me also ask you this. Um, in the past 14 years as the CEO, you've seen some incredible life-changing stories. Without putting anybody on the spot, or you might not want to put their names out there, just talk to us. It's not a get-rich-quick. You've mentioned that. You've been very clear with that. There's work involved. There's no income claims and all of that type of stuff. But you know, because you're the CEO, what the true stories are. Talk to us about some of the things that you have just been so proud of, been impressed with, because you know what our global vision is capable of doing for anybody who plugs in and connects. Talk to us about some of those stories. Yeah, I, I want to start with nonprofits first off because it's so exciting for me. We, mm. We've had about 10,000 plus different organizations from around the world that have come on board and use our technology and bless in one shape, way, or form. And uh, some of them have been fundraising over and over and over, very frustrated with everything they've done and been mm -hmm. able to come in here and bring in thousands thousands and thousands of dollars for their organization told us it was the best thing they've ever done wow. now with our crowdfunding technology it's not even just organizations anymore anybody mm -hmm. can set up a campaign and wow. so i like that because sometimes you think about the big organization like a mm -hmm. church building or or yeah. a, a school, or, yeah, right. school but, uh, with the crowdfunding i mean it's it's like some of these stories uh, I have a friend of mine that's in, in uh, New Jersey named John Bisball, who's just phenomenal, uh, Long Island, actually. And uh -huh. he had a friend that was kind of down on his times and yeah. was kind of behind in bills uh, a little bit and set up a campaign for him, um, mm -hmm. promoted it out on social media, and mm -hmm. ended up bringing in $9,000 
that was right. just going straight to that family to right. help them with their apartment, different things wow. like that. Wow. Uh, a loss in the family that, you know, medical bills and funeral expenses brought in right. thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. In yeah. Front, and just people giving, you know, and, and uh, that that's part of our model. I mean, that, right. and that anybody could say something up like that. And then right. in terms of the financial success of the business, it, the, this is just amazing. So we have people that have emailed the company are like, my check is wrong. I'm just trying to tell you guys the truth. It's too big. Something you know, there's a mistake, and we're like, no, that was your check. We had to go research it. And we're like, that is your income. They just weren't used to being able to earn money from a team or people right. that have been on vacation for months and months and months to take care of their family, and the right. checks just keep coming in and keep coming in and keep coming in because it's residual income. Mm -hmm. And before, they had a job where it wasn't residual. To me, some of those stories are mm -hmm. my favorite uh, just mm -hmm. because people, you know, aren't used to that. Now, business owners could see that and they'd be a yeah. little bit used to that like i think yeah. the business trucks are coming but a yeah. lot of people like me back in the day would never mm -hmm. imagine that we've had mm -hmm. stories where people in different countries that got introduced uh via social media like facebook um mm -hmm. came on board and earned thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in their first mm -hmm. full qualified month um and it just it, i just love that and, and the leaders that were helping them from uh, the u.s um, mm -hmm. earn money for helping them do that, for building right. that business with them. People right. that have been on our cruise promotions that have never been on a trip, a vacation ever, that go on the cruise and they're just like, oh my gosh, looking around, yeah. like, and it changes their life forever. And, and I'm just fortunate yeah. and blessed to be a part of that. Um, wow. You know, just people that want to raise their own kids, uh -huh. being a People that want to be able to do this and supplement their full-time job, and then they can fit this in. Um, so many, so many stories. Uh, the, you know, the products and services, the health products that we have. I've, I've seen people that, and again, we don't make any medical claims. We're really right. careful about everything in this industry. But uh, people that have had, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, tumors and different things that you know, started taking the products and they didn't have to go into the invasive type surgery because it's a coincidence that the products were that amazing mm. that when they started being healthier with what they were taking in. Mm. Um, me, you can tell I get a little wired up from yeah. like I get a little excited. Yeah. So I would have a hard time sleeping and I would take some of these sleeping products from H-E-B in different places and, and it, I wake up with a hangover, like just oh. like that. I don't want that from H-E-B, like is that right. not natural, it just is not right. right. We have right. a product called Pure Sleep that I would have been the first skeptic for sure that it would never work wow. and I got knocked out, woke up, refreshed and I was like, this is amazing. I mean, wow. just, uh, so wow. different different things that we've been fortunate to, to connect with in different ways and I hope everybody understands like having the the blessings we have of growth with all these nonprofits and these people. Now, when there's a cool product or service that comes out, yeah. I'm sure you can imagine it's not hard for us to negotiate with them <coughs> because we have people around the world that could all of a sudden be customers of that business or, mm -hmm. or selling that business. Mm -hmm. they, need, they need that. Some right. of these businesses. Some of these businesses have brought in more sales. Here's another great story more sales within their first month with us helping sell their products than they had in three years Whoa. without us. So think about that as our company even grows bigger and bigger and bigger around the world. Yeah. What that means to those businesses, what it means to people that are using it, the nonprofits that we're helping. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of great stories, you know, the, Freedom, the flexibility, the income potential, mm -hmm. the, you know, all those things get me excited. Helping the nonprofits fundraise, all, all great blessings. Mm -hmm. Man of God, of course, a business like this is open to all people of all beliefs. But I want you to speak specifically, perhaps at this time, for this particular broadcast, to somebody who is leading a ministry of some sort of a kind, whether they're the pastor or whatever, or maybe it might be to the homeless under the bridge, maybe it might be to some, some kids at a shelter, and they have big dreams to help hurting people. The one thing they lack is the resources to do it like they really want to do it. Can you speak to that person very candidly 
about finding out more about our global vision and how it can literally come alongside as a great help, a great resource to give the provision for that vision that they have. That's so great. A lot of the, a lot of our visions will not be our global vision. It won't be. They, you know, the people in ministry have their own vision. People that are not in ministry might have a different vision. But could it be something that helps support that? Might it be one of the smartest things you've ever done to help support that? Why do I say that? Because typically time uh, is necessary to seed into any kind of vision. It takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a business working from anywhere, having mm -hmm. it based, not based on an hourly salary or, or, or commission of our own, mm -hmm. but having a distribution network where it's all these revenue streams and all these different people, the little bit from a lot, mm -hmm. creates freedom of time for the leader like you that might be watching. And so mm -hmm. time can allow you to, to do your artwork, <laughs> to do your ministry, to do your whatever school to do whatever you have in mind and time mm -hmm. is very necessary and mm -hmm. so when we talk about Paul you know that had to make tents I'm sure yeah. that it was hard to minister sometimes in in all you know the amount of time that it might take to work that job to be able right. to have money to and right. this kind of thing you see especially the nonprofit focused and love for the people and and, yeah. and all the empowerment that goes into it it kind of fits a lot of it and it creates a flexibility of time and then money mm -hmm. um, definitely is necessary. I think sometimes the good guys that really want to make an impact for the world are not worried about money and, and it slows us all down in a mm -hmm. different ways. We end up not being able to do as much as we could have if we were resourced really, really well. So you have these beautiful hearts mm -hmm. that are just wanting to impact the whole community that mm -hmm. are underfinanced because the business side of it is not their passion. Mm -hmm. So they can't do as much. And right. Then you got the flip side, where some of these sales aggressive, like <laughs> people want to make money like crazy and don't care. Right. They run over everybody along the way. Right. They're making the right. big money. Right. And they're not, right. and they don't have the heart to help everybody. Mm -hmm. so that's what RGB kind of does. If those mm -hmm. people get attracted to coming in here to mm -hmm. make 10, 20, 30, 40 grand a month, right. They can, they're doing it by helping nonprofits around the world. Right. So we we got them. I'm not saying we're tricking them because right. it's a blessing that they get to. If they're driven that way, now they got to right. be a blessing to teams and to people and to help yeah. and do all that stuff. And the people that do have a heart for people that maybe just give, give, give. Now they can earn a cut for all wow. what they're giving. They can help wow. nonprofits earn money and and for their family. And so instead of just volunteering, giving it all away. Now they're building their income, working smart, not just hard, and, they're, and they're, they're doing both at the same time as they go give, give, give. They're making a cut from that for helping families and organizations, and, and it really fuels what they're doing. You know, like a, 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 we have to respect the, the yachts of the world, the big dreams, the big visions, yes. but there's usually a tugboat that is necessary to take us from shore to get us on the yacht, and without that, you know, it would be a wet you know, frustrated journey with our bags floating around in the water, you yeah. know, and trying to swim out there with our family. But so we, so I look at RGB for a lot of our ministry type people, and mm -hmm. it's, it's not to replace your vision, but no. it's to be that tugboat that can help you get there. Um, and and we need to have respect and honor and be excited about that. And mm -hmm. A lot of times, people are only looking for the home run, and that's right. why they might not ever get it because mm -hmm. they don't respect the tugboat. They, they, right. they only see the big vision, and they don't have enough money or enough time or even maybe even enough experience, knowledge, mm -hmm. haven't been trained uh, you know, properly, and RGV could help with all of that to wow. help them grow forward. So, you know, Definitely ministers and people that uh, have a heart for people, uh, I, I encourage you to use the crowdfunding, if anything, the different nonprofit revenue stream, uh, but also think about the mall and how it can impact and, and also – Think about the people that we love. Yeah. You know, they're struggling a lot of times in their careers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we love ministry because we get to teach the Word of God to them mm -hmm. and support them spiritually. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of times we're with them maybe on Wednesday. We might be with them on Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. We might say we're going to pray for them, which is mm -hmm. awesome stuff that we yeah. have to do. But they spend the majority of their hours at their workplace, not right. with us. Right. And that's why I've always respected this industry and business as a – 
uh, as my family, like we talked about before, even mm -hmm. before I was a Christian, because mm -hmm. we were in the trenches together. Mm -hmm. they, they, they took me under their wing to help me build a career. They weren't trying to just be nice to me. Right. We were in it together. Right. They were nice to me, but there was a we were, we were yoked together. We were right. partners. So right. So the more I was successful, the more money they earned. Yeah. The same way it was for me. I had this heart to be a, a, a psychologist because I wanted to counsel and love on the people. That's what I ended yeah. up thinking about going to school for before business. And, right. And then this business world, where people have so much of their time committed to business, now yeah. we're we're tied with them to help them with that, whether it's part time or full time or yeah. anything. And yeah. Yeah. Love that part of it. I so love it. As we wrap it up, we're going to go to Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8 and, and, and 9, if you can grab that and have it available for us. I really want to thank you and, and give God praise for you being the type of man of God that you are. We talked early in the broadcast about that connection, that, that sweet spot for those of us who are in faith. Your ministry has to be the foundation because what good does it profit to gain the whole world and then lose your soul? And there are many people that might be, oh, man, wealthy beyond belief, but none of it can go past the grave. None of it. It all stays in a box behind. So we want to make sure, from my perspective, that, that for those of us who get involved, put the first things first, your, your, your inner you. Got to take care of that inner person. That's what ministry is all about. It's about finding your purpose, finding your real you, and that comes from the one who created you. That comes from God. We, we, we didn't create ourselves. You know, so the thing of it is your ministry. But then what you're talking about, that entrepreneurial piece, that tent making, that, that, that carpentry that even our Lord Jesus had himself, yeah. that, that catching fish that Pete had. So many yeah. Bible persons, business-minded persons, these entrepreneurs, they did what they did so that they can provide for the ministry and they could provide for their families. Too many people, I believe, in the body of Christ and leadership, they prosper from the people, but they don't prosper the people. And we want to be the types of men of God, men, men and women of God, where we can prosper the people. It's not good enough for us to be the head of the ministry and everybody else is suffering and hurting and lacking. And Oh, we prayed for them. That's great. But, but what about the practical needs? Can we help pay someone's rent, someone's mortgage? Can we send someone else's kids to school besides our own? Those are the types of things that I know that you have a vision for and many persons watching this might have a vision for. So I'm so excited about that. And in that leadership, I love it because everything multiplies on leadership. We're not going to be here always. See, you see, I, I believe I'm a little bit older than you, so I, I, I'm guessing I'm in the second half of my life. However much time I have left, I know for a fact it's going to expire at some point. So I have to leave some people behind that I have poured myself into that can pick up where I leave off and take this thing higher. And I know you think like that. And that's what this whole industry is about. So when we combine that ministry, that entrepreneurship, and that leadership, and it comes together, I believe with all my heart that those are literally the keys to living the most successful, impactful life that one can ever live on this planet. So I salute you because I see all three of them in your life. So I want you to go to Joshua chapter 1, and if you don't mind, read verse 8 and 9, and talk to us uh, about how it relates to everything that's been said already. Oh, man, you are such a blessing, Pastor. Bless you, man. Just got to tell you, seriously, like uh, your heart and what you've been through, you know, yes. what, you know yes. all the stuff building your character, building you stronger to make yes. that legacy, to make that impact for people. You're already doing. It. You know, like uh, you, I thank you for this opportunity um, here um, to be on there. And, and I know that this verse, when you told me what you know, to, that we're going to finish it up with this, I was like, oh Lord, because this is one of my favorite verses ever um, yes. from the you know, Word of God. And, and uh, Joshua one and verse eight to keep this book of law always mm -hmm. on your lips, meditate mm -hmm. on it day and night, so that you can be careful to do everything that is in it. Then, <laughs> then right. you will be prosperous and successful. Verse nine: uh, Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. 
Do mm -hmm. not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Yes. And uh, I just love that, have always loved that, especially, um, I, and not to go into my whole testimony, but there's words like this that I was excited to learn network marketing, entrepreneurship, and leadership. Mm -hmm. and then see it in the Bible, see it in the Word of God, mm -hmm. that actually is how I became, a, you know, saved and, and became, gave my life to Christ. Wow. So it was more, it was more of a, a you know, a self-development kind of thing and then seeing where it was yeah. really in the Word of God and you know, yeah. I was going to develop myself more than anything uh, that I'd ever been through. So right. um, to keep the Word of God on our li lips, a lot of a lot of the word of God, as well as business, it, 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 we have to be able to have it inside of us, and that's mm -hmm. where too many people don't have it inside of them. Um, they they want the result. At uh, the end of the verse, verse eight talks about being prosperous and successful. So they mm -hmm. want that. They might want ministry. They might want that uh, being a doctor. They might want that being a dentist. They might want mm -hmm. that you know, being a plumber. They might mm -hmm. want that to fill up the bank account. They're looking at their apartment, their bills, their 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 house, and they're like, I need. To be prosperous and successful, right? right. That's the fruit of the labor. That's not. Yes. The, that's not the labor. That's yes. the fruit. The fruit comes from the tree that's already growing and that is successful. Then the mm -hmm. fruit is is what what is created from that success. Right. right. A lot of people would take it. We think that success is easy. We think ministry mm -hmm. is easy. We think that mm -hmm. business should be easy, and it, and and then we get ourselves frustrated, and mm -hmm. that's where people quit, and people end up, you know, not fighting through. To the other side, thinking that everybody's got it easier than me, and, right. and Facebook and social media do this more than anybody because we see all the pretty pictures and we see them doing it, and they're like, "Oh man, they're all doing it," and they're like, "Right, the glamour shot, right?" Right. And we're looking at outtakes, you know, like, like my raggedy life, you know, like it's not like that, and we feel like we're losing. We're right. Not losing. We're right. not losing. We do the right. same thing. We got right. 20 different selfies and we're like, which one do I look the best in? You know what I mean? And we're putting them up. You know, let, you know, let me get, I'm not going to put my little, my little food that doesn't look good. I'm going to wait till we're at a nice restaurant. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Then yeah. We, yeah. we all do it. So <laughs> That's right. That. But the prosperous and success comes from getting it inside of us. Mm -hmm. and, and this verse is saying, Meditate on it day and night. Yes. Get it yes. in there. The doctor has to get it in there to heal the patient. The That's plumber right. has to know how to do the plumbing to be yeah. able to have the food of getting paid to be able to do the plumbing. We mm -hmm. have to be able to do ministry by getting it in us yeah. first, by getting yeah. it all the way in so that it's part yeah. of us, so that it's not us speaking, that it's him speaking. Yeah. It's the same thing business as well is that it has to be in us and the more we meditate on it day and night and again mm -hmm. it's not sexy it's not exciting it's not it's not the fruit part that we're still looking for but mm -hmm. it is the most important part right meditate on it day and night so that you can be careful mm -hmm. to do everything that is written in it mm -hmm. so i might not do what is written in it if i'm not studying it right i'm not meditating on it. so if right. i'm not doing it then I won't be prosperous and successful. Right. Two plus three equals five. Mm -hmm. We don't think about five and wonder when it's going to come. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to do the two plus three equal, and uh -huh. that's where a lot of people in business and a lot of people in ministry and a lot of people in leadership that could do amazing things, God has gifted them. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. A total random point, but I used to play basketball when I was younger. All right. Going to and I remember, you know, some guys that could jump out of the park. I mean, they could go crazy gifted, you know, and, 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 and I couldn't be able to do all that stuff. But when practice was at 6.30 a.m., you know, for Ooh. high school, Ooh. they wouldn't want to come. Oh. They wouldn't want to yeah. listen to that coach. Yeah. So the giftedness is overrated. Yes. Yes. The giftedness is overrated. Yes. Are we going to meditate? Mm. Day and night. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do. Be careful to do everything that is written in it. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do mm. not be afraid. So there's challenges that will come. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. We're not in this by ourselves. You know, we have a Lord wow. and Savior uh, that died on the cross to be able to you know, give His life for every one of us. 
that we can be able to be rec you know, reconciled and be able to live in eternity forever, yeah. that we can even live a heaven on earth if we understand the sacrifice that was made, that we can yeah. be thankful yeah. and excited even in all of our adversity. Right. Jesus didn't have it. Nobody in the Bible had it easy. All of these stories mm -hmm. are tough, grinding stories that you hear about. And, mm -hmm. and But the, you know what's the challenge? You know, Pastor Brown just reading this and preaching on this on Sunday, is that when we read the Bible, we see the outcome of the story. Mm -hmm. you know, we we know what happened to Jesus and he's in heaven. We know that that Moses, you know, you know, trying to get out of the, the Israelites out of Egypt and had to go through all this stuff, right. and that right. you know he got to the promised land, and we know eventually, and he didn't get to go, but they got to go. We right. see the completion. You know, Abraham right. ended up having Isaac. You know, right. he brought him up to the top of the the mountain, and he said, "I'm mm. going to have to sacrifice my boy." And, yeah, you know, he's walking right. up there with him. Where are we going, Dad? It's like, oh, we're we're not going for a picnic. You know, I mean, we're going right, and and, uh, and and they go up there. And and then, but he didn't have to sacrifice. God provided, and we That's see right. the completion. That's right. But we don't see the completion in our own story. Mm. And that's what gets us frustrated, because mm -hmm. our story is still being written. Mm -hmm. So we start to have self doubt. We start to wonder if I'm going to make it. So mm -hmm. instead of focusing on being better, instead of really focusing on the Word of God or things that will help us in our business or whatever you might be in, we start to have that frustration, that self-doubt, maybe I'm not meant for this, I don't know, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. and instead of improving, which we should be doing, being a beautiful work in progress, just being yeah. thankful that we're doing whatever little bit of work we are doing, mm -hmm. we start, to, we start to, to, to think, maybe I shouldn't be doing all this stuff, maybe mm -hmm. this wasn't meant for me. Mm -hmm. and, and, then our giftedness and what the vision that God put in each of us is not getting able, we're not able to fill it because of our flesh that is telling us, we're, you know, that we're not worthy. Wow. And wow. Because we don't see the whole story. Written. And I'm wow. telling you, just keep in his words. And when I see that, it's, it's saying, keep, keep in it, keep in it, keep in yes. it. You know, yeah. same thing I'll tell people in business, like, it's a different, it's a different language almost. You know, mm -hmm. Marketing is a different language if you've never been successful with it. Mm -hmm. it, it mm -hmm. you know, and guess what? Everybody successful that I know that's ever made a hundred grand a year or more, right, has to start off being terrible. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't think about that. They had to start off sowing money, 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 time, 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 rejection, rejection, rejection. They didn't get to skip all that. No. We just see the whole story. Yeah. And we're like, that's their story. They're making all the money. Yeah. I'm not. That's not my story. We think, but we're not understanding. We see their after pictures, but we don't understand their before. That they had to meditate day on night and slow yes. things to help them, and you and I do too. So I, I hope that helps in ministry or business. Wow. Uh, because it, I think it is crucial, and we just have to be strong and courageous. It's not saying it's easy. It's not saying that you don't have to do anything. It's saying be strong and courageous and get that word in day and night, and then all this stuff does become somewhat easier. Um, not easy, but it becomes easier if we are walking in that faith and that strength that comes from Him, uh, from above. You know, and, and uh, so I thank you for this opportunity and, and for everything that you're doing. And and uh, you know, it's just been such an honor to spend time with anybody that's watching this. And hopefully, I didn't offend anybody throughout. You know, I love you, and I'm excited to be able to connect with anybody that might watch this and and, and help you. And, and Pastor, you have been a, a major blessing to me, uh, the city, and I look forward to the best to come to help glorify yes, sir. Of our relationship. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you've heard it for yourself. That's the heart of our CEO of our global vision. We're talking about the CEO himself, Mr. Chad Shapiro, right here in San Antonio. Not just your average CEO, also a mighty man of God, pastor, in fact, a Bethel International North Central location right here in San Antonio. But let's listen to this. We're working with leaders all over the world. If that's you, get in touch with the person that shared this broadcast with you. There's work to do. There's provision you need. But there's a vision that we have, and it's called Our Global Vision. This is Pastor Mel Keys of I Am Joshua Generation, and we're claiming God's promises together right here right now. God bless. Bless you, man of God. Love you. God bless you. Love you, my man.